Hey gang. So there's an old adage in video production or movie making and all the rest of it, or in fact, even in uh, presentation uh, skills. When you're about to make a presentation, you should know what the hell it is you're going to say. And quite frankly, I don't know what the hell it is I'm going to say. So let's break some rules. What we're doing here is having a look at the uh, Battle Above the Clouds and looking at the campaign map. And uh, scenario, for scenario eight, we're looking at the historical scenario and a buddy of mine and I, uh, Austin, we're going to play this. And we're using the historical setup because we don't feel like we know enough about the game or the history of the particular battle, although he does know a fair bit, uh, much more than I do, about the American Civil War, given it's his Civil War. Uh, he's a American. Um, so... What I wanted to do was have a look at the map and become familiar with the terrain, understand what the victory conditions were, what all that would mean to me in terms of gameplay, and then also uh, have a look at perhaps what the impact might be on uh, gameplay with regards to the advanced rules for supply. Uh, they seem to make uh, a significant difference to some, well, to a certain degree. I'm not sure yet because I haven't really played. So uh, we've only played the basic game, uh, I think twice now. <clears throat> Two short scenarios. So let's have a look at the map. So this is uh, basically the Battle of Chickamauga and the campaign around Chattanooga here. It's in 1863, I guess August through September or sometime around there. And the idea here was is that Chattanooga is a... Is that Chattanooga? Yeah. Chattanooga is a major rail hub and as you will recall in the 1860s or by the 1860s in the US rail had enabled uh, armies to move uh, great distances and keep forces in supply and uh, thus they became central to kind of the maneuvering elements uh, the forces trying to penetrate in and out of the various uh, regions and districts and a lot of combat kind of became centered around control of these important junctions. And Chattanooga is one of those. It's a hub that links the Nashville-Chattanooga Railroad with the uh, uh, Chattanooga-Cleveland Railroad and then also the Atlantic Railroad. So rail going this way, this way, and this way. And if we look at the... Here's where the two maps fit in onto the strategic map. And you have, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. So you've got Kentucky, Virginia, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia. And then there's this section where we are, which is basically uh, in you know, the a corner of Tennessee and part of Alabama and uh, Georgia. So what we want to do is look at these victory point locations. And this is an interesting game also from the perspective that we're going to have a conflict going on here as well as conflict going on the, on the tactical map or the operational map because we've got uh, a set of forces to start here and a set of forces to start here and they can come onto the map, come off the map, forces can, forces can come off the map here and there are a substantial number of victory points to be had. There's 30 points if uh, the uh, Union can capture Knoxville, you know, 30 odd for Virginia and then same for Athens, and if there are forces in uh, Resaca or Rome in Georgia, then that spells trouble for the Confederates as well. A substantial victory in terms of uh, scale of number of points you need to acquire, a substantial victory would require, I believe it's 120, 129 victory points. So if you look, as we look at the map, we can see it's 50 for Chattanooga, that makes sense, right? Uh, 15 for Trenton. 25 down here for this particular county. You can see how that says Walker and then this says uh, Katusa, I think that says there. It's hard to see. I'm trying to look through the phone on an angle. Uh, if you capture these towns, these red discs, these red cubes, I should say, you'll pick up the victory points that are associated next to them, right? So <clears throat> that would give you control of a county. So capturing this town here, Ringgold, will give you control of the county of Catusa. Similarly, all the way over here, if we pick up Cleveland, then that is going to give us control of the county of Bradley, 
and that's worth 35 points. <coughs> the Union forces set up kind of a raid uh, in a line along here. There's the or origin of supply, so rail comes in along here. There's a depot here, and supply can be moved by rail and basically deposited along the way on the rail line. Now that's not a rail line here, but it is here. Now there is a broken bridge here, and we can put a pontoon across there, but we can't repair the bridge, which means I think the rail basically ends here. Um, which is gonna mean uh, that to the, the, the uh, Union, they're gonna have to shuttle by wagon uh, supply points basically from here up into the combat area or the, the area that we wish to potentially control. So, the, the, I guess the quick way to win this would be to capture Chattanooga, use the strategic map and pick up uh, 60 points over here, if you could, and uh, you know either going this way or going this way, and then pick up one or two more areas. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? But I don't think it's gonna be that easy <clears throat> given the way that the uh, Union forces are, first of all, very spread out. They have these large plateaus here that are basically break up the supply chain. And we'll talk about supply in a second. Uh, break up the supply chain and also interfere with our ability to maneuver. Uh, we can move very quickly along this rail line. We can move very quickly along the other side of this river here. Uh, but everything else coming across this way is uh, fought with problems just because there's not a lot of roads that are conveniently accessible across these large plateaus. There's one here. This looks like another one here. Uh, you know, there's some more victory points all, all the way back here, right? But they're going to be difficult to get. So as I look at this, uh, supply is important from two standpoints. One, uh, if you're, it's, it's checked every four turns and you pay, uh, you consume supply points every four turns. And when you do that, uh, you're, you're eating a supply point for each, basically each formation. And you can choose not to use a supply point and forage, and you have a 50-50 chance of foraging, assuming you're not fatigued or anything like that. So it's you know, fairly, you know, good chance you'll be able to forage, but if you can't, the next time, and you go out of supply, then you, the two things happen. The next time that we check supply, if you're still out of supply, then you lose a strength point. Uh, secondly, you're immediately flipped uh, over to, when you go out of supply, you're flipped to your disorganized side, which means you are going to be reduced in strength, number one, and number two, when you actually are in combat, when you're disorganized, there's a negative, uh, a negative DRM on the roll for combat. So it's a significant effect, but not insurmountable if you have substantial forces. <clears throat> and I think the I don't know what the exact unit count is, but it feels like the Confederate forces have a substantial uh, strength advantage and potentially a leadership advantage as well in this particular scenario. So what I was trying to look at was how can we, as the Union forces, uh, use maneuver to our advantage in difficult terrain and avoid a clumped, massive fight in this very difficult area. Keeping in mind that all the ferries that go across here all these are all broke, are going to be broken at the beginning of the scenario. Uh, the, for the first turn, the Confederates can't even move until I cross uh, this river. And you know, we've got forces that, oops, excuse me. We've got forces that start all the way down here. And we really need to get them up in this direction. But what I was considering was, is it worthwhile trying to pick up, cherry pick, some smaller token counties and townships like that and this, all the way over on this map edge, maybe even this, and try and draw some force out of the Chattanooga area, weaken it a little bit, and then give ourselves a better chance of capturing this near the end of the, of the scenario, or maybe, uh, I don't know. 
The other alternative is, can we perhaps weaken the Confederate forces by isolating them, uh, cutting their rail line and rail support? Who knows? Something to think about. Now, how, how, does, how does the actual supply work? I told you that we have these deep, this concept of these depots. That's where that blue disc is. That's going to be a depot right there. And a depot will supply forces 15 hexes away. And we're going to have to you know, pay tokens to, similar to OCS, pay tokens per formation, in essence. Now, we also are going to have wagon trains that can move around. Uh, and they move like any other unit, so it's an intermittent amount of um, uh, hexes or movement points per activation. That you can have, you know, two activations per basically two activations without any penalty per turn. So you'll get somewhere between two and twelve movement points for the turn. So we're going to have to shuttle SP from here up to where they need to be. Wagon trains can throw a supply of five hexes. Uh, forward basically or any or it doesn't have to be forward it can be back but uh, throw five uh, hex range and uh, we've got to work out how we can keep enough forces together so that we can keep things con consolidated and concise and easy to supply and not have to scramble to race wagons to folks so a really, a really complicated scenario as you sit back and start having a look at this thing and trying to work out what the hell we're going to do. So I'm going to go ponder on that. I thought I'd pop this up here to share it with you in case you hadn't seen it before, seen the game before. Uh, I want to share a little bit with you about how supply is going to impact things and have a look at where the VP locations lie. And then as the game progresses over the course of 34 or 40-odd turns, whatever it is, I'll be posting, we're playing on Vassal, I'll post some pictures up and you'll be able to see how things progress. I'm not going to reveal what I think my plan may or may not be, and I don't know what it is yet, because uh, I do know that my, my opponent occasionally looks at the blog and the videos. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Okay, here we go, later on. Ciao.